Hello everyone, Curious Cordero right here, and it looks like the TMNT, the Kawabunga Collection, is getting a huge collector set, and it appears Sega is reviving two classic IPs with a rather interesting approach. So starting off with the TMNT Kawabunga Collection, it was revealed by Konami on Twitter that a collector's edition of the game would be releasing alongside the standard versions of the game. We can see here the set will come with a laundry list of collectibles, including original box art by Kevin Eastman, a 16 by 24 cloth poster of TMNT Turtles in Time, illustrated by Kevin Eastman, an acrylic diorama, an enamel pin set, 12 tournament fighter cards, which I'm really excited about, and a 180 page art book. So this collection looks absolutely stunning and it really reminds me of how companies used to do collector set for games, you know, including fun things like trading cards, physical displays, and posters. The colors absolutely pop on the poster as well. Now the price is pretty expensive. It'll retail for $149.99 US dollars. And unfortunately it looks like it will only be available here in the US and Canada. So you might have to import if you really want this collector set. You can pre-order it at pretty much any retail store, including Amazon, Target, Best Buy, and GameStop. And for our last story today, Sega has announced that they are reviving two classic IPs in Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio. This news comes to us directly from Bloomberg saying, Sega Samming Holdings Incorporated is developing big budget reboots of its Dreamcast games Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio as it taps into its back catalog in search of global hits like Epic Games' Fortnite according to people familiar with its plans. They go on further to report that Crazy Taxi has been in development for over a year, with a release planned two to three years from now, with there being little to no information in regards to Jet Set Radio. Both of these titles are part of Sega's Super Games initiative, which is a partnership with Microsoft and their Azure Cloud platform. Sega and Microsoft are said to reimagine how games get built, hosted, and operated with the goal of adding more value to players and Sega alike. It's also noted that the possibility of these two titles being a part of Xbox's Game Pass service is probable. Also, because development on these titles is still so early, it is being noted that these games could still be canceled. Reception to this announcement is incredibly mixed, with some people happy that these titles could be making a comeback, while others are upset that the games could become live service games, with a plethora of paid DLC add-ons most likely being implemented. Sega is looking to make something in the vein of Fortnite here in regards to that service model, so the latter possibility seems much more likely. I'm kind of in the middle. It would be really nice to have these games return in a big budget fashion, but I'll take a wait and see approach in regards to its service model. Either way, Sega seems to be taking a gigantic risk on this Super Games initiative. So that's the video guys. I'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below about these two classic IPs being revived. Are you excited? Are you worried? Which one was your favorite? For me, I grew up playing a lot of Jet Set Radio Future. I really love the soundtrack of that game and just the gameplay itself of being able to grind on certain areas and reach high points and graffiti, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> being a general menace to society was a lot of fun. However, the whole, you know, live service thing does worry me a little bit, but I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. I'm Curious Corduroy. I will see you guys in the next video and please remember to always be excellent to one another. I'm